Turn Around Tuesday, everybody. Hello, FX Glenn, Jim. Everyone doing okay? So if it wasn't Turn Around Tuesday, I might not be recommending this. Hi, Tico. How are you? I'm just looking at all my friends and the relationships that have developed through hanging out in a trading room with me for years. Forex Scale, how are you? Ardianto, you Top Gun, how's it going? Just want to remind everyone that next week at this time, Turnaround Tuesday, starting an hour early, just like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week. Hello, Catherine Zhang. Brooks, BW, my trading warrior brother, how are you? Everyone doing okay? Okay, since it is Turnaround Tuesday, just a few things I'm looking at for candidates. I'd like to see Canada take out this low. Everyone see this low here? And I do believe that we will have a nice divergence. So uh, how it could be played is to have maybe a small piece on here and then a small piece on lower. And keep in mind, these are my ideas personally. They have nothing to do with what Forex Analytics does, right? This is just a room gig, right? Room ideas by Forex Stop Hunter. So keep that in mind. So I think that we're, we're due for some type of correction here. We're starting to show some divergence. Uh, maybe they have to take this low out first to complete, but I don't think we'll get a confirmed low in here. Also, if you like to hear the ice crack, so far we have a non-confirmation in Euro as well. Uh, this one I would handle with a small piece here, maybe another at 1750 and wrong over an 18 close as a possible turnaround Tuesday candidate. Again, this is my idea. The only one that agrees with me on the team is uh, Blake. He said, be aware of a potential failing breakout here. So what would be a failing breakout, guys? It's closing back under this red line. Looks like it's about 1687, 1687, these highs. So be aware of it, Blake, as well, demoing the RSI divergence here. Everyone else, except Greg, who says he's looking for the rally to end between 17 and 18. So hard to be perfect, and that's the beauty of partials. You have a toe in the water, you still like it, you put another toe in the water, and then when it starts to work, you put your whole leg in. Give me a why if you're with me. You don't have to agree with my uh, call on this. But just want you to be aware that it's a possibility here. And then when it comes to the crosses, I'll probably even try and top pick S&Ps if Jeff Cooper's going to be right between here and 2480. Um, but as far as it spreads, what great intuition by Steve Volge yesterday saying that he would not be short down here, that we could still get another high. Great call by Steve Volge. Don't fade Steve Volge. That's why I talked about taking half here, being wrong on the other half above 80. So when I look at this yen cross, almost at new highs, and what started the decline was the guppy. And now the guppy is uh, having some trouble at the 61.8 level, okay? So there's some confluence uh, with the moving average and the guppy here. So as far as yen crosses between euro and pound, I'd go with the guppy. Because if this is a failing rally here, we could get something like this from here. I know that Grega still has longer term objectives underneath this bottom. So uh, those are my ideas into a turnaround Tuesday. Any questions? You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You remember that, Chad? You ever do the hokey pokey? How about you, Blake? Yeah, 
Are you old enough to remember the hokey pokey? Yeah, and I used to do it in a skating rink too, on top what, of it. So, <laughs> what kind? What a roller, roller, roller blades or roller skating rink? No, oh, in the seventies. Okay. Oh yeah. wow! So you went on dates to roller rinks? Oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my God! You're, yeah, you're, yeah. A, you're a throwback to the fifties, buddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a throw, <laughs> I'm a throwback to the at least seventies, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, the Euro is still, I mean, it still looks very bullish here. I mean, it, it, yeah, it, it tried to close. You called it uh, yesterday, Blake. You warned people not to try and top pick it yesterday. That was a great call. Yeah, it's still, I mean, it, it, it closed barely above that. I, I think we're, I think we'll see the 1720 uh, level, which, you know, the 1720 is, um, it, it's those, uh, those previous highs uh, back yeah. from, um, back from uh the the highs of uh summer of 2015 we might yeah. actually even get above that i mean there's a there's a lot of demand of the euro so the euro is just you know it's it's obviously it's on fire right now um i i don't know if it's a good idea to be fading it but um but it is uh it, it's extremely strong and then you know i, I bet I, you do it so i bet you're waiting for 1720 to try it Actually, you know what? I'm I'm actually waiting for a little bit higher, and and let me okay. show you what I'm thinking right now. Um, Appreciate it. More. Yeah. So. Because I'm I'm just the host. This well, this is like <laughs> kind of like a lo longer term idea that I've 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 actually shared it with a few people. Um, so the euro dollar, you know, we're coming up against this resistance, and and we're 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 there. I mean, we're we're really close. Um, I think it's entirely possible the euro dollar spikes above here. We're already above one seventeen right now, um, yeah. and we make we make a move for this is a thirty eight percent retracement. So you have to imagine how many stops reside above one seventeen twenty. Okay. I would now think I know a why you come up. Yeah. So it's a fib right. number. All right. It, it, it's a, it's a it's a key fib on a weekly basis. Now above that, and this is why I think you got to wait a little bit. Above that, you have um, spike lows from 2010 that come in at um, one uh, eighteen. Let's just call it one eighteen fifty roughly. And so what I want to see is I want to see it rally past all that resistance, clear out every stop along the way, and then I'm going to sell it at like 118.50. I don't think you have to risk more than 119. But that's still 100 and, you know, yeah. that's still 200 pips away from here or 150 pips away from here. That's right. what I'm aiming to do. I don't know if it's going to happen. You know, I always like to tell people I like to plan my trades. Um, and whether it – Good habit, know, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like, okay, I, I mean, th that doesn't mean that I won't um, do other things at the same time. But they're but, normally better trades than your impulse trades when you're just uh, scanning the markets and you see something when you act yeah, on it, right? Yeah, yes, normally they are. I mean, they, yeah. they, they typically will be. So, um, so anyway, I and and I do think it's it's entirely possible that we make it up there, and that's why you have to be really careful about fading the dollar right now you know of course i you know i've tried to buy a little bit of dollars here and there but um but i'm a little skeptical because of the move that we're seeing here um Blake. yes good morning sorry to interrupt vix at nine around nine at the moment yeah yeah vix continuing to go, to go lower i think vix will i think vix will spike today I think VIX will spike higher today. S and P's taking out some stops above the highs. The Nasdaq's underperforming, which uh, might be leading this charge lower. Um, and you, if if you guys watched uh, Microsoft yesterday, Microsoft or uh, not Microsoft, Google, Google beat. I don't know where it's trading at pre market, but it was down like thirty bucks last night after being up. Um, it, it came crashing on down. So I I, I think that the VIX is going to actually turn uh, at some point. Uh, today, I think VIX is that you want you want to be long volatility today, but anyway, thank you, Steve. Um, going back to the uh, the euro though, uh, so I'm 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 waiting to see if we start taking out the. I mean, it looks too pretty at the moment not to take out these highs. It looks too 
doable. Um, it, you know, it, it, it looks, it looks like, um, hold on really fast. I got to do something really quick. It's Tuesday though. Yeah, I, it's I, Tuesday. I know, you know it's superstition, these turnaround Tuesdays, but they, I've seen a lot of days on Tuesday reverse. I've heard you talk about it. Yeah, there, there are, um, 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 I, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I'm a big turnaround Tuesday fan, uh, <laughs> but we haven't, but we haven't seen, we haven't seen that yeah. as of late. The market's been just uh, plowing higher. You know, man, it's just so. But that's a but, tactful way of saying, you know, <laughs> I like it, but you know, uh, I'm not going to trade on it. Yeah, uh, yeah well, I get it. Well, you know, I, I think you got to watch the price action at the open. Right. Today's open is going to be pretty important. Um, I'm a fan of Blake Morrow. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dale. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and Steve like, Balkin. Yeah, yeah. What team, you should, you what team do they play best. for? Huh? And, and what Stelios. What and, team do they play for? Uh, what team? They, they play for uh, the Knicks, New York Knicks. <laughs> okay. I must be the point guard then, because I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're at the and three point line. We know which line. point guard you are, Jason Kidd, since you're also bold. That's right. Stelios yeah. is uh, behind the arc, <laughs> swishing the ball all day long. Okay, um, he's got something in Aussie here. No, I was just like, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of just scanning around the markets. I, you know, and it stinks because I had a long Aussie New Zealand and I let that go last night, which, you know, it's, uh, it's up like 40 some odd pips. Um, but no, I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking around, you, you know, you look at the dollar, like the Norwegian Krona's, you know, tagging really key support down here. Swedish Krona continues the, you know, dollar Swedish Krona continues to, to just get demolished. Um, you know, S and P is uh, is breaking higher. You can yeah. see it breaking to to new highs. Now we we yeah. broke brief new highs here in the S and P pre market. Um, the Nasdaq is not following. If if you look at the Nasdaq, the Nasdaq is you know underperforming here, which is interesting. interesting. Yeah, it, it is. It is it's, what's that? Yomi Coke Jinx. He oh, says Jinx. it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Yomi eight Cokes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never play that game with my kids. No. All right, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, you know, w w one of the things um, the dollar, the dollar Canadian, it's 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 been under pressure, and it, we're in this like locked in this down channel. I'm really, uh, I, I set up on a little alarm here. I want to be notified, you know, when we break above 125.50. Uh, if, if, if that happens here today, I want to be notified because yeah. I think this is one of those that, uh, that can break higher. The U S dollar Mexican peso, uh, we stalled. This is a pretty key here. Let me, uh, let yeah. me, let me twice this, now uh, at that level. Yeah, that, that right here is uh, pretty important. It's uh 1780 and we went to 1779 today. All now, right. So we, we almost got, we almost got to, you know, what, uh, 10 pips from your target on the pattern in play. You tell people to, you know, at least take half when you're close enough for government work on a pip. Yeah, I mean that that that. But I, I actually think that you know if we break through 18, you know, yeah. it could go a lot higher than that. I'm looking at more of the channel resistance up here, right. um, but but we're knocking our head up against previous support, which is acting as current resistance. So to get another leg up, we have to get above 17.80. Um, so that's you know I think that's worth paying very close attention to. Um, because the dollar is firming up against certain currencies and, 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 and that's a, that, that could be a signal of a little risk aversion as well. You know, when you're starting to see the, the, uh, the, the commodity currencies, um, under a little bit of pressure. So, uh, oh, keep an eye on the Canadian, keep an eye on the peso. Uh, the dollar yen though has uh, spiked up pretty aggressively. Yesterday we, we, we talked about it coming back up to the 200 day moving average and um here let's go over to the daily and we are uh we because we hit the 618 yesterday and we held it and respected it we put in a doji and then we're bouncing um the 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 us dollar japanese yen can make it all the way back up to 112 without much of an issue if you if you you know read the analysis from uh dollar yen last night um uh, you know, it says the dollar yen is comfortably below the 200 DMA, and now that it rests at the uh, now now that it rests at the 
oh, I, I, I put in the wrong number. Um, rest at the 112 level. Considering we respect, we respect the 618 retracement, we can see a bounce back to the 112 level. That's what I meant to write. I don't know what it rests at the one of, it should have said 111, I think 111 level. I just, uh, I, 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 that was a typo right there because I wrote that last night. Um, but anyway, it, it, you know, the, the dollar yen could make it back to 112 and we, we have seen a recovery in not only the dollar yen, but a lot of the yen pairs too. I mean, you got, you got the euro yen has, uh, has rallied sharply because of the euro. We got the pound yen that is bouncing. The Aussie yen um, is bouncing. The the New Zealand yen, the Canadian yen is trying to trying to break higher as well. Yeah. Um, so, you know, these yen pairs look pretty firm, and I think a lot of that has to do with the uh, with the S and P at the moment. But like I said, we have to we have to see what happens at the open. A Looks couple like of the, the guppy moves, is the weak sister of everyone that you showed here. All the yen crosses uh, that you showed. Yeah, the pound. Well, the pounds really hasn't, you know, hasn't broken out. So I mean, that's the the big yeah. problem with the pound, right? You know, the pound right. is so, kind of right. it's lagging. I mean, you got the Kiwi rallying, you got the Aussie rallying, you got the Euro yeah. rallying, you got the dollar Canadian under pressure. You know, it hasn't so made the, a new high since November. That there really, might be a message in there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it's a oh, oh crap, we're going through Brexit message. I think is what okay. it is. But yeah. um, yeah. but but the yeah, the pound is. Pound is underperforming. You know, for those of you guys that trade uh, Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum, you, you guys got to watch these. These came out of, uh, you know, strong triangle formations that were noted yesterday. Uh, you know, like on the Forex analytics, if you go to Bitcoin, uh, whoops, wherever, Bitcoin. Have you tried it yet, Blake? No, I don't trade Bitcoin. No, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm against uh, supporting. Um, uh, Unregulated. Market. Yeah, I mean it's it 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 it's it's more or less where you know it's a, I, I just I I'm not fond of the Bitcoin market, but I'll analyze it, you know, because I know people are into it. Right. Okay. Um, but you you can see we we had a whoops we had, we had a consolidation here, a triangle consolidation, and and we broke down, and and Bitcoin it's Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. You can see Ethereum. They 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 both had triangles, and they're breaking out of those triangles and bearish breaks at that. So um, it looks like we're going to have a near-term setback. And that's not saying that I won't ever trade Bitcoin. It's just not not my cup of tea. I'd rather trade, you know, uh, spot currencies. Um, do but I know. know. Do what you know, buddy. Yeah, there, and there's a lot of interest in them, but it's just not something that's my cup of tea. Not at this stage in the game. I, I have a. I I know people that trade. Uh, cryptocurrencies and they're, they they have a hard time getting their money out and uh, and and you know it's hard to short. So I I think it, you know once it matures a little bit as 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 an yeah. investment vehicle, I'd be more apt to trade it. Um, you know I don't know if there's anything wrong with not at this stage in the game at, at like buying some cryptocurrency, but I'd like to see the uh, the the demand lull. Like uh, Bitcoin went through a two year consolidation period. Or yeah. maybe like a year, year, year and a half consolidation period before it rallied. You know, you can, you know, see how we in just, you know, we, we an just. ETF, an ETF on the crypto would, I think, bring some stability to the market because then you're bringing in institutions. And, I think uh, so too. And regulation. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd rather wait for, wait for that um, before, before myself being involved, but that doesn't mean, like I said, it's not, not mean it's, it doesn't mean it's right for, you know, not right for everybody or other people. Yeah. It's just not, not for, not for me at this, at this stage in the game. Um, okay. Uh, looks like the Euro is, uh, yeah, I guess we're, we're, there's some selling coming in, buddy. Yeah. I mean, you know, oh, everybody knows we're up against key resistance here. I mean, if, yeah. Uh, the, to, to, to break above this resistance, it may not happen until FOMC tomorrow. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, um, I'm a little, little nervous about the idea of it breaking out ahead of time. Cause it's a real key technical channel break. I mean, it would be, I mean, so it's going to take a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of power to really bust out of that range. And I just don't know 
if and if anything, it might be just a small stop loss run. I just don't know if we're going to get a a massive amount of money being put to work ahead of a, a, a you know the the Fed. Um, you know, and and we all know the Fed's not going to do anything. They're not they're not raising rates, so uh, it, that's a, the, a known uh, a known event right now. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. Um, like I said, I, I I'm I'm more skeptical of the move up here right now. But I am like if if tomorrow we can get a move up to one eighteen and and change, I will be a seller up there because that, that I've been planning out that trade for the last couple of months. Um, and and so we'll we'll uh, we'll, also, we'll see. So volatility was at nine. It's uh, it's firming up just a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that that. You know, gold and silver. Silver is actually really strong today. Silver's uh, silver's had a nice little nice little pop this morning. Um, but yeah, I don't know what else to really really do here. I think I think the DAX is still pretty heavy, uh, just because it's you know the, with the euro as strong as it is, the the DAX is really not performing too well. Oh, uh, that's what I want to point out is bonds. Um, if, if you guys take a look at the bond market, the bond market has been under a lot of pressure today. One of the reasons why it's been under so much pressure is because if you look at the look at the failure here the last couple of days, we hit the 618, um, we hit it and couldn't break above it, and then we saw a really big reversal. We're coming back to the 200 DMA uh, in the bond market, so keep an eye on bonds because you know with bonds going down, yields are going up, and that's really helping the dollar yen. Obviously, it's not helping the dollar anywhere else, but it is helping the dollar yen um, move move uh, higher as bonds move lower so that's another that's another thing that 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 should be on everybody's radar at the moment is watching this bond market um, but yeah and this 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 uh, pound dollars you know really just kind of underperforming here I don't I don't I don't know what to do with the cable up here I think if the dollar uh, gives us some sort of bounce um, the pound might be the place to to trade and and the reason why I say that is because if you think about it from an asset manager standpoint, the dollar has been getting creamed, you know. And if you're if you're if you're if you're a manager that um, that 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 trades uh, currencies, and you're like, okay, dollar's getting smashed. I'm gonna buy euro, buy Aussie, buy pound, buy Kiwi, uh, you know, uh, uh, short dollar Canadian. When you when you take a step back and you go, okay, well, the dollar's got hit enough. Now it's time to uh, look at my positions and say, oh, NASDAQ's hitting new lows. Um, and and, and you're, you start looking at your positions and you go, okay, well, what uh, what do I want to do here? I, I think you're going to probably pull the plug on the trades that are underperforming, like the cable. Because if you went and bought the cable, the cable's just not performing. And so... Anyway, I, I think it's it's something to uh, to keep in mind, you know. And and one one last thing I want to mention before I let um, Steve take over here. So I don't trade my personal account much, but you know what I did today is I shorted the Nasdaq today earlier this morning, like about an hour ago. And I, I did that because of the the, the underperformance of the, the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ's actually getting creamed this morning. Dale, are you there? Cool. I had myself oh. muted accidentally. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I, just to, I was like, oh, my God, I'm here by myself. I've been talking to myself the whole time. Here's the NASDAQ. No, no. I, creamed, so. I heard you. I, I was going to say, you know, when you were talking about money managers getting rid of their underperforming assets. Yeah. Um, you know, most people's management style is to take their winners to cover their losers. Right. So, and that's um, that, that's not the way to think about it. It's right. tough. It's, it's that's, a, it's that's, a, why, that's why I brought it up. So it's a it, tough dynamic. Hard to do. Yeah, it, it, it's hard to do for a lot of people. Um, and, and so, and, and you know, so it it, it it's uh, yeah. So I I actually shorted Nasdaq in my own personal account this morning, like uh, about an hour ago. So, um, and I know I want I I've been planning on being short the Nasdaq since yesterday. So I, I just wanted to get up this morning and do it. So I did it, um, just because I I think this market's a little frothy here. So yeah. anyway, um, so Steve, I'm going to let S&P's up 10 handles and NASDAQ unch. 
Yeah, and I, I think that's pretty glaring. Yeah. It's gonna it's gonna lead the market uh, lower. I would I would venture to guess. And volatility is so you know it's it, one of those. Uh, I think it's at a, at a price where we're probably gonna we're gonna close. Volatility is probably gonna close back at ten or higher today. Volatility DSI at eight as well. I mean, uh, nobody nobody's expecting a volatility spike as it seems in the market. Everything is you know everything is rosy. Sanguine. Yeah, everything is sanguine. Yeah, exactly. Are you cautiously constructive at anything today? <laughs> um, <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you that I, I was writing Nick. Uh, actually, you are you are in the common chat, so you saw it. Yeah. You remember that we had a conversation with Luca yesterday. Uh, yes. By the way, Blake, have a nice trading day, mate. Yeah, you, you guys too. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, Blake. Good luck on the Nasdaq. I'm, Thank I'll you. short. I'll short some Amazon for you today. Great. Okay. Um, we. Um, that, that, that's why we're saying to people that you know, um, it's good to be a Forex Analytics member because the webinar is one hour per day. I mean, one and a half hours, but 30 minutes is an interview. Nicole actually beat me to making a pattern in play, a short pattern in play in the Bund, because CC is an A, B, C, D. That's how they call it in harmonics. If you remember, Dale, yesterday I called about the A, B, C because I'm approaching it in an Elliott Wave perspective, which had a perfect target at 162.67. And we also said that this coincides with this zone of support resistance that I have on my chart since like months and months ago. And we also have in the territory the 50 and the 200 EMA. So Luca brought this conversation yesterday, and I said that, listen, Luca, I want to be short the Bund, and this is the place to be short the Bund. The only thing I'm missing is a trigger, you know, the proper candlestick. Um, I, I'm not going to wait for the end of the day. I'm already short the Bund since uh, here somewhere. At the, uh, actually, at the, yeah, at the bottom here. I think it's 93, 92, I got filled. Uh, because obviously, I'm not expecting this candle to reverse completely or whatever. So, uh, you know, this is the reversal we were looking for. This was a perfect ABC. Um, this was almost a 50% retracement, the 50 DMA, the 200 DMA, um, okay. the support resistance zone. So, you know, we said since yesterday that for both the, the bonds, uh, meaning the... Flag. the it's like the flags you were getting in yes. Canada all the yes. way down. Yes, and, exactly. And uh, EuroCAD, whatever that one other big payoff trade. Yes. Yeah. So, so we got confirmation, okay? And uh, I, I think that uh, you know this is going to be good for at least for at least you know to cover some distance. We'll see what's going to happen, but I'm uh, I'm pretty optimistic, especially for the Bund. I really do believe, I mean, I really did believe in the downside since we actually rolled over here and we saw this candle. Um, and I think that at the very, very least, we're going to make it to here, to this level, roughly 160. Um, but my intuition the tells me that... Blue line, have... going to the blue line, buddy. It's a magnet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But my intuition tells me, as I had drawn here, that we will go at least all the way to the blue line, exactly as you said. Okay, so I think that even now, this is probably a good, uh, a good place for somebody to look to the downside. And there's nothing more than you can ask. This is a big reversal, and you still have a very well-defined risk, and uh, the downside potential is multiple times what you're risking. Okay, so in my book, that makes it a good trade. I don't know if it's gonna prove you know to be a winning one or not but it ticks all the boxes i needed to tick you know to tell to myself that you you should be involved with this okay now having to do with usd knock that blake mentioned this is a beast but i warned you that this is following the usd cad right and things are getting very serious now very very serious you can see what i mean right so this is clearly a one, two, three, and we're currently in the third one. Uh, at some point, we're going to get a rebound, but I'm, 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 I'm going to be looking to add back, you know, um, half of my position at any, at any decent rebound. Uh, so uh, the serious thing, real, real serious? 
real solutions that, as you see, we're breaking yeah. below yeah. Yeah. Uh, a support that has been holding since right exactly this month of 2015. So it's a two-year support zone. Steve, but as the sands and the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's, is that actionable? <laughs> <laughs> now, having to do with USD CAD, being ahead has already stalled. So uh, I will be looking for a reversal, as I said many days ago. I will be looking for USD CAD to reverse first. Um, but still, uh, as I warned, um, the first reversal you're going to see in the USD CAD is probably going to be um a bull Today. trap yeah might be Today. might be it's yeah. going to be soon but it's yeah. going to be a bull trap so right. you know people are going to be this is the bottom they're going to start piling in and then they're going to be taken to the woodshed once again before we actually see a bigger rebound okay you ever been in a woodshed oh yes where yes. at your house <laughs> no in the markets <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. I'm just everyone enjoy. Uh, give me a why if you like laughing while receiving compelling input. Give of me course. a why if you like both at the same time. I I think it's important that we you know have fun. Too. Lucas Lucas says that he jumped the gun. He sort since yesterday, and that was a awesome trade, Luca. Yeah. See, uh, as, as you know, keep it funny. Yeah, as you know, my my trading style. I like to be you know to to wait for a little bit more confirmation. But you you actually top top uh, picked this thing. Grats. Luke is a Luke is a pro man. Yes, he is. He's an excellent trader. Okay. Um. So. Um. Yeah. Bund is hitting new lows by the way as we speak. This this is already a candle that has taken us back to four days ago at where we opened four days ago. So this is a huge. Huge candle already. I mean, this is this is an evening star formation already. Uh, the candle at the moment is a long Marubozu closing. If if theoretically speaking, we closed, you know, right here, right now. I mean, you cannot expect anything more for a reversal than the candlestick formation you see here. Honestly, I mean, uh, and you remember my last words were were yesterday about the Bund Dale that yeah. any kind of a reversal. I'm going to it trust it pushed higher from that level to change the picture. It did not. No, it didn't. It that didn't. was your comment, quote unquote. Okay, uh, now having to do with the NASDAQ, uh, my position still stands. I was expecting most probably another high. We we did pro produce a new a new high yesterday. We went all the way to 5,950, 51, 52, whatever the hell it was. I'm not convinced that's enough. I would want to see uh, 5,990. As we said, we have a confluence there, and we might actually do that. I mean, I'm not convinced that uh, the Nasdaq is rolling over right here, right now. Uh, but you know, another push higher. I'm adding to my position, and then I'm going to be looking for a deeper correction. But I'm not convinced that today is the day we're turning lower. We might see another push higher. Okay. So whatever I said yesterday stands. S SPX already confirmed uh, confirmed this kind of a behavior for now. I have a target at 2,490 actually in the SPX. So that's where I'm looking, which more or less will coincide with what I'm looking in the NASDAQ, one more uh, push higher. So these are the levels um, I have in mind. Um, I, I would rather be short the NASDAQ than the SPX, uh, like the previous time. So I'm not going to be involved with both of them. I'm just monitoring the SPX, of course, as well. Um, as we said, the VIX just before intraday hit a 9.0 low. Um, as we've said plenty of times ago, to see uh, even an intraday um, level like that, we need to go back to 2000, December 2006. And we all know what followed then. But let me repeat, that does not mean, I mean, if you were short at December 2006, you know, 
you might have been stopped out before actually the market reversed, okay? So we are seeing many things that show us that the indices are much closer to the end of this run than to the beginning. There's no question about it. I just, expect- want, to put, I just want to alert people to it. Earlier I said Canada may need to take out the will to move. It did so on this one-hour candle uh, that I have up here. Those are new lows. The RSI reading is 40 at new lows. That's a very glaring divergence. Um, I'm betting the reaction starts from today. Let's so, see. Take a Let's look. See. Also, the U.S. dollar. Uh, also, the U.S. dollar. Um, Big uh, DSI, there too. DSI is at looks seven. better. Yeah, That's the all. U.S. dollar DSI. The moment is at seven, seven, and the Canadian dollar DSI at the moment is at eighty-seven. Wow. So these point to a rebound that will be coming soon. But that doesn't change what I said. In my opinion, the initial rebound is going to be a bull trap. Okay. Yeah, so but that people doesn't can make money in a bull trap. Definitely. As long as they're aware that there is a limit, you know what I mean? To what yeah. they might they, they can be aiming for. That's what I'm saying. And the guppy, Steve, you were really sharp on the guppy. I have a, a red candle working right here in the guppy at the 61.8 level on the one hour with the 50 day moving average being right I actually having to do with the guppy now that you mention it. This might be a decent recommit level to get Greg's target. Say the whole move from 47.80 to 44.10 was A and we're completing an ABC for B and I'm not an Elliottitian. But maybe- You remember though that we warned, this is the four hour chart, you remember that we warned that this confluence here right. might turn it higher, and it has done so. Right. I'm the talking moment. about now, though. Yeah. So um, people should be. I, I I bailed out on all my position here, as you remember, yeah. uh, at 144.70 here. Where is it? Yeah, here. Whatever. Uh, and it was not yesterday. It was two days ago. So it yeah. moved. It moved lower. Yeah. Now it's actually above the level I had dumped all my position, and I'm conflicted about the pound yen. I have to tell you. Oh I mean, God. yeah, I am. At the moment, I I, I would not be long yet, but I currently, will be. Sure. Currently conflicted. Alliteration. Yeah, I am. Oh, I am. Because, yeah, I am because at current levels and with the current price action, I'm 50-50 that was the end of the correction or the correction is more complex than that yeah so the fact that we saw a rebound from here you know gives a point to the bullish case on the other yeah. hand we haven't had a higher high yet so and every other yen cross is near it or through it and, exactly you know. exactly so i'm you know i'm conflicted and i'm not going to be involved again yet now having to do with the euro yen, as you said at the beginning, I warned yesterday that this looks to me like a you triangle. Did. This is exactly the line we drew yesterday. Yeah. That this looks like a triangle and this worries me. Great call. Um, thank you, but it wasn't a great call. It's just a simple oh, observation, rally. in my opinion. What's wrong with that? You said, I think you could rally. I wouldn't be sure. That's a great call. Yeah, okay, but it's an easy call, honestly. I, I mean it. it. It was an easy call to make because, you know, that that was a triangle. I mean, I've seen triangles a billion times in my uh, trading career, and, you know, I know that in the vast majority of the cases, they break in the direction of the trend. I mean, you know, it's simple like saying that B follows A, I mean, in, in the alphabet. That's how it is. Um, so uh, we haven't seen a new high yet, but to be honest with the price action I'm seeing, now I consider it even more likely that it will resume to to produce a new high. Now, uh, this high has a high chance of being terminal, though. I mean, this new high, if we see it, has a big chance of actually then producing a deeper reversal. Okay. So uh, people, on the other hand, should not be jumping in being long at the moment. If you wanted to go long yesterday, that we were close to the support of the triangle i mean if your kind of trading is the short-term trading you could have said yesterday when we said that okay i'm going to be long here i'm going to put my stop loss below the previous low we had in the triangle so for example that would have been 
128.50, you would have been long from 129, so you would be risking roughly 50 pips, and you you would have already um, you would have already been 100 at the high 150 pips in the money. That's not my my kind of trading. Uh, but somebody could have said that yesterday. Now this is not the place to establish new uh, new long positions because, in my opinion, there's a high probability that another thrust higher is going to be at least you know for some time terminal. So you know be be careful of that. Um, so that's said as well here. So let's go back to the daily charts and have a look at a few more things. Let me also see your questions. Guppy's fading pretty good. So yeah, uh, Stalin, Steve answered your question, right? And what's uh, the question? Let me see, mate. Well, he well, he asked about the Guppy asking you shall we see. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, personally, uh, personally, I wouldn't be doing anything with it at the moment. Yeah, and billions of times you've seen things. It reminds me of Carl Sagan. <laughs> billions and billions and billions. I bet you haven't seen a billion triangles. You're yeah, I, I, I bet I haven't seen either. But uh, Maybe joking, a aside, joking aside, I've seen thousands of triangles. Uh, okay. And that's, that's right. definite. Right. So, so, you know. so statistically speaking, yeah. still yeah. a decent sample. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyhow, All right. anyhow what, what's an extra four or five zeros, man? You know. What yeah, exactly. Anyhow, people a zero. people that are into math math know that, uh, especially in uh, um, in anything that's normally distributed, uh, a sample of 120 and above is a you know is a statistically significant sample. Simon says you could convince Eskimos to buy ice cubes. So you don't <laughs> think you're a salesman, but when it comes to selling your ideas in the market, you're tops. Go no, I, I, I honestly think, you know, and, and that's that's something that people should be careful with uh, because, you know, you, you are easy to convince people, but my job here is not to convince people, it's just to, you know, to just give my point of view and, you know, for people to consider because, you know, our, our purpose as well in Forex Analytics is not to, uh, is not to give uh, you know, um, like trading tips to people, etc. But it's actually to educate people in how they should approach uh, trading, because you know, um, honestly speaking, very honestly speaking, this is not a, a good business proposition. But personally, I mean, uh, in a humanitarian level, I would be happy to see that people that join forex analytics um, don't need us after six months one year or whatever because they've actually what yeah because they've actually um have already taken you know uh, and um, absorbed the things that we have to offer to their trading mentality and to the way they view their markets etc 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 so but you that, know what steve even a real good trader you know even uh, someone that's done it for a long time like me even though they may know the methods and have uh, gained some tools they could use for the rest of their trading lifetime, the way you put together the website, there's just so much information at your fingertips that, you know, busy traders that are busy trading, um, time is important. And no, you, you, you know, you're absolutely I, I mean, right about I can, All I have to do is have a question about something. Oh, what's the wave count? What's the harmonic? Uh, where are the areas? I mean, there's so much on the website that you save, you know, you would save Paul Tudor Jones time. You, you're, you're absolutely right about that. So let me rephrase. I mean, I, I would wish that after some point people are only, um, you know, subscribed to Forex Analytics because it saves them time in screening out the markets. You know what I mean? Because, for example, I know what how important that is simply because I've taken plenty of trades uh, during the past few months, which I would have missed if somebody didn't ask about a market at the perfect timing, you know what I mean? Because I monitor a lot of markets. I mean, I monitor close to 50 markets, but I'm not watching all of them like every single day, you know what I mean? And sometimes I might completely uh, forget to check something that I take on occasion for four, five, seven days in a row. 
and an opportunity might have already come and passed there. So for example, just by being here on the webinar and people asking questions and us seeing the markets together, sometimes I've seen immediately a trade that I would have missed because I wouldn't have even checked that market for some days. So, you know, the same thing. And speaking about that, before we go back to the market analysis, I have to tell you that Forex Analytics is adding more tickers uh, according to the feedback you gave to Blake. Uh, so starting on Monday, next Monday, I mean, obviously the upcoming Monday, we will be covering uh, a decent amount of uh, more F um, FX uh, percent, um, you know, through all our analysis, Elliott waves, harmonics, uh, basic technicals, macro candlesticks, you know, the usual stuff. Um, I can't give you the exact details because we're still deciding, but it's going to definitely include some euro crosses, some pound crosses, some more, some more, some more yen crosses. Okay, so just letting you know. And let's go to the questions uh, and see what else people want to watch. Also, guys, uh, if you see the link in the room and you think that Steve's analysis every day, comprehensive, covering everything that you ask for, is worth a buck a month, click the link. I think you're worth at least one dollar a month for your analysis, Mr. Volge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if you agree with me? Click the link. Okay, and you'll get Volge 24/6 on his basic technicals and candlestick. And like I tweeted yesterday, if you really think you got no value for 10 days, I have uh, Piggy sitting here on my desk, Piggy Bank boy. I'll break it. Send you the buck. Yeah, we covered CAD. Personally, I think we're turning today. We have nice divergence. Uh, yes, we covered CAD. Uh, we said that it should it should turn quite soon. Uh, and the move that it might produce might cut some people long. Uh, in my opinion, you should be very careful because the first move higher is going to be a bull trap. That's what we said, mate. Uh, Copper chart, of course, yes, sure. And you know something, it's very helpful for everybody to have a look on occasion, you know, charts like um, copper, uh, because yeah. many times they lead the market and you can see what I mean here. Copper is a metal with a PhD in economics. That's what they say, yes. Yeah, I, think, he, I, think, I think he went to Harvard, Mr. Copper. Okay. Um, Cooper, oh, that's Cooper, Anderson Cooper on CNN. All right, go ahead. Copper was uh, within this descending channel, and you know when I saw this move higher, uh, that gave me more confirmation that something is happening with the commodity uh, pairs. So uh, <laughs> Copper is actually confirming this move, and as wow. you see, it seems that today is going to close at yeah. Nice flag. Six yeah. month highs, roughly, because it's yeah. already, I mean, these two days, that tweezer top there, we actually closed a lot lower. We closed at 278, 274, whatever. We're currently above it. So copper has broken uh, higher, and uh, it, it seems more than certain that it's going to test the 50% uh, FIB of this move uh, lower from the breakout of this triangle, as you see, because this was a clean triangle. Uh, that we had and in general I have to tell you that you know by zooming out in the chart as you see this is a nice you know bottom information that we've built here huh? so Steve, Steve uh, is it true Stelios told me that you bought your wife a copper wedding ring and tried to pass it off as gold <laughs> no, where the hell did you think of that? Actually, Dalios told me that. I, I, I just wanted no to know if he was, he was he pulling my such a thing. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know something? I, I have to be very honest. I, I don't think my wife cares so much about that stuff. Okay. And that's, you know, a good thing for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, saying it as an issue of mentality, not as an issue of, you know, saving money. Yeah, that's I mean, why she took the cubic zirconium. <laughs> uh, now, having to do with silver and gold, 
uh, you remember that we had warned that the next step, once we broke above here, we had warned that the next step for uh, silver is 1675, and the next step for gold is at this level, 1257. We, we've already reached that level in gold, and we are seeing some kind of a reaction, although I have to say that yeah. yesterday's candle, which was a candidate of being a reversal candle, yeah. um, accompanied by today's candle, which saw uh, some nice downside, but now yeah. is reversing, might be pointing more to a bull flag. I mean, if we get a couple of more candles like that, like spinning tops and doges yeah. and things like that, it will make it more likely that we will have at least one more thrust higher afterwards, okay? So if we keep on consolidating like this, yeah. uh, this is what might happen. Uh, but for the time being, we're seeing an initial reaction where we expected to see. If you were already long gold, I'm not going to tell you to close your position because I'm not seeing a breakdown yet, but I would have booked 50% of my position here, uh, in all honesty. So, you know, I would take some profits here. Um, and probably I would move the rest of my stop somewhere there, somewhere close to 12.30, okay? So I'm, I'm just telling you what I would do. It doesn't mean that you have to do it, just, you know, giving you my 50 cents here. Uh, having to do with oil, oil did exactly what we expected. It rebounded. It trapped people short, thinking that it's going to resume. And it's moving higher once again, okay? Now, where can this thing uh, stop? I'll tell you that in my opinion, the risk reward is not to be long anymore if you haven't been involved with it. We said that it's going to rebound from there. That was an excellent point to be long. Then you had an, an opportunity again because we said that the first sell-off is probably going to be a bear trap. So you got a second opportunity there. Now, would I be long up here? Uh, no, because I wouldn't know where to put my stop loss. I mean, yes, you could put it here at 45.31, for example. But I wouldn't take this trade anymore because, in my opinion, 49, this area generally, 48, 50, 49 is going to be a tough area to break. We also have this descending uh, channel resistance. So, in my opinion, the easy part of the oil rebound is likely over. I'm expecting to see more probably higher prices, but, you know, mm, uh, I'm not... I'm not sure anymore. I'm, I'm now mo mostly neutral oil. Okay, so that's that's my view in crude. Uh, and a, a macro comment, although I don't know if Stelios wants to pitch in on that. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the Saudis move uh, to um, announce, you know, um, another export reduction, etc., uh, shows that there is obviously some demand some la lack of demand, okay, some demand issue. And that in the medium to long term is definitely not a good sign for oil prices, okay? I mean, they, they, can, they can boost it up, they can, you know, talk it higher, they can even take some measures to do something about it. But, you know, as long as we see weakness in demand, uh, you know, oil will be generally capped to the upside unless we see some kind of an event, some kind of a war, etc., etc., etc. So, you know, I'm, I'm cautious. I'm very cautious in, uh, in my, oil. My two cents, sorry. Yes, sorry you? My yeah, two yes, cents on this is that we've seen um, the Saudis and the upper countries for, you know, for a year now or, or more actually talking and talking and job warning and saying we're going to do this and that. And actually nobody is actually adhering to the the agreed cuts and everything. So they, they, you are right in what you're saying, but the flip side is that we know now they have tried everything they can without actually doing anything. So the next move might actually be much more, uh, you know, forceful on their side. You know, it, I, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you know, we've we've been through the year, year and a half of um, talking about it, and um, you know, they're trying, like you said, every trick in the book. I think there is a chance that they might actually you know, do agree on a production cut, really adhere to it, and, and maybe even, you know, bigger than, than before, and than theoretically was before. So we have to be a little bit careful because they are getting now to a point where they have to do something. They really do. So, you know. Yes, but if they I, don't I, I, deliver, we will definitely yeah. see some kind of a breakdown. And yes. even if they do deliver, 
I'm not sure about how forceful that impact will uh, end up being in the market. I'm not saying that it's not going to move uh, crude higher. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. But I'm saying that look at it. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm looking at it like a um, like a like a ball, like a heavy ball. Okay, like a concrete ball. And let's say that it's not it's not on a flat surface. It's in in, in inclined surface. Yeah. You know, it's harder you need more yeah. uh, force to move it uphill than downhill so yeah. this is in a sense the way i view uh crude Stelio. yeah yeah no I, I i'm not disagreeing i'm just saying there you know we've we've gone past the point just like the the you know the the eu they were job boning in the beginning and you know kicking the can and doing everything and then draghi comes in and says okay whatever it takes boom so um you know i'm just saying it's a risk and like you correctly said if you're short crude you're short event risk and you know how the world is you know it's it's yes, you know, yes. It's, it's we shouldn't it's not a cheap risk to be short it shouldn't be anyway you know so i'm just a little bit cautious i'm not I saying agree, that's one of the reasons also as very as nick very well says that people should <sighs> never be short during the, the weekend crude never exactly Exactly. Because during a weekend, if you if you get some kind of a moving event, ninety five percent of the times it's going to be something that's going to make a crude jump. Of course, of course. You know, Steve, that I, sounds I, like a Greek bocce ball that you described. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny today, huh, Stel? <laughs> you, yeah, you're on the no, roll today. I, I'm doing my whole stand-up routine. You know, I talked about the markets, and now I'm doing my stand-up. Yeah, but you yeah. haven't given us any real singing today, and and uh, I started well, getting well, you can catch me at the improv tonight, Steve. Let's get on the <laughs> okay. plane. Okay, I'll be there. All right. All right. Okay, uh, two more pairs that people are asking for. Let's have a look at them. Uh, one of them is Eurocad. I have nothing to say about Eurocad. I mean. It's That's obvious, hard to believe. It's obvious that we, we, are, we are in a choppy consolidation. As long as we don't see an acceleration higher, the chances of another move lower are, uh, do remain high. Okay. So that's all I have to say. And still, I, I have an unfilled target, which is a little bit lower at 144.45, roughly. Now, having to do with CAD yen that another friend is asking for, We already got the new high we were expecting here because we were expecting a new high. No, we didn't actually, but I do still expect a new high because this consolidation, if you if you look at it at a four hour chart as well, it was a triangle. Let me show you and let's not repeat once again what a triangle does. I think we've all figured that out. This is what a triangle does, okay? So I think we are in this part of the move. We saw the correction, which wasn't lower. It was a triangular correction, okay? Um, you can even view it as an ABC since we had an incrementally, I mean, from a technical perspective, it's triangle, but from an Elliott wave perspective, actually, it, it might be something different that we have to go down to a four hour chart, but it doesn't really matter because I could see another thrust higher to 90, but as you see, as I've drawn here, I expect that the next thrust higher is going to be, you know, uh, terminal at least for some period. I mean, I believe it's going to produce a deeper correction lower. So I think that CAD yen now is close to a short-term top, but perhaps not there. Okay, that's what I think. Dale, who do we have today for an interview? We lost the coach. We have, uh, Tim Cozen. Ah, okay. I see that the time is uh, up. Do you want to have a look if he's here? Unless we have any he other is, questions. He is here. Give me one more minute, please. Sure, sure, I will. Let me see. Uh, we covered this. Um, okay, I'm sorry if I missed something I don't seem to have, but if I have, please. Uh, type it again um, because we have usually a lot of questions and sometimes you know while browsing through them uh, oh yeah somebody had asked about Euronoc yes Euronoc let's go Euronoc Euronoc as it seems gave us some kind of a fourth I'm guessing one two three four 
So Euronoc, let's now go ahead and delete all that. And this is what I see with Euronoc. I see one more thrust higher before a deeper correction. Okay, this is what I see. Thank you, Steve. Are you ready? Yeah, uh, you know, don't you think that we kind of have a version of the Tonight Show? Do you guys remember Johnny Carson? Yes. So I fancy myself as Johnny, and you're Ed McMahon, because you're kind of like my straight man. Uh, you set me up without knowing it all the time. And Stelios, <laughs> and Stelios is Doc Severinsen, who trumpets in every once in a while. <laughs> and, and, and Blake, Blake is the director and producer of the show who only comes on set to make sure that, you know, we're doing everything okay. So I hope everyone enjoyed the Tonight Show. And now as part of the Tonight Show, we have Tim Cozen with us. You know, Johnny always brought out a guest to sit on the couch next to him. So I'm going to invite uh, Tim Cozen. Everyone welcome Tim Cozen to face. Welcome, Tim. Here he is. Hello, Tim. Waiting to hear your voice yep. as you walk on stage and your screen. Perfect. Got uh, it, buddy. Okay, nice to screen? hear your voice, Tim. I nice hear you too, Dale. Where's uh, which screen around? Uh, right now you're back on mine. You had a screen up before. Let's try that. How's that? That's it. It's show, showing your desktop right now. Desktop. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Over here. So, so Tim, you know, I know you're from Twitter. Are you a regular face attendee? Uh, you know, more or less. I really enjoy the uh, the daily webinars when I can get to them. Um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate what you've done with the kind of done with the place. It's really it's kind of a fun thing to just come in and kind of see what other people think about what the market's doing, and then also kind of get other perspectives. And then, obviously, you know, love this part of the Johnny Carson show. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you this. You're a private trader. So, you know, unlike a lot of guests that I have come on, you know, they have a service, some type of service uh, for another revenue stream. I know you're involved in real estate. We, we chatted a little bit on Twitter. How, tell us about how you got into trading, what it was like for you. Did you have mentors and uh, kind of take us back in time and talk about your journey into trading? Yeah, it's like land before time it was forever ago. Um, well, like you said, uh, I've been in real estate actually quite a while, pretty much out of college, and then started looking at trading, I guess, in 2007, 8, something like that, as just kind of part-time, kind of for fun, and something, you know, something to just look at in addition to, to real estate, and then really kind of kind of took off from there, and in all, it kind of, well, now I actually kind of bounce back and forth. I do both. I love trading quite a bit. Also love real estate. I know some of the guys um, talk to Blake about real estate, for instance, talk to some of the other traders about real estate every so often. And what's what I think is interesting is really the kind of the commonalities that you see between something like trading and something like doing real estate, you know, full time. What are they? What are they? Well, I, I, I think there's kind of a um, kind of a misconception when people need to get into trading that trading is a job. And it's the same type of thing in real estate. You think real estate is a job when, you know, it's, it is a job. It has aspects of a job. But in a traditional job, you trade, you know, you trade time for money. Even in a sales job, you trade, you know, you go to, you know, you go to the sales meetings, you pound the phones, you go whatever you do, and you trade that hopefully in exchange for a certain amount of money at the end of the day, at the end of the week. And trading and real estate both are very similar in that there's not a direct positive correlation to uh, how much time you spend and how much money you make. Sometimes when you overmanage a trade, like we all know this, when you overmanage something, you, know, you see a great target, you see a great entry, you see a great risk reward, um, and then you get in and you overmanage it, you overthink it, you move the stock down prematurely and get clipped or you know whatever it might be, when you really would have been better just sitting on your hands. Um, and real estate's, real estate's not exactly in that respect in that uh, you know the more you manage it, the less you make sometimes but the real big commonalities i think between the two is the misconception of treating one like a job treating one like you go to the office on monday and you you get paid for going to the office on monday you don't do that in either business um and i think i think new traders especially in or new real estate investors 
could really, you know, kind of take a, a tip from that. Um, in, yeah, you know, so in, there's no immediate gratification in either. Um, I, there's, uh, there's knowledge, but there is no secret, but it still takes hard work to yeah, uh, that, be accomplished yeah, at both. Absolutely, absolutely. And in, in trading especially, um, the, the time, it's, it's easy, man, I've done it. I've sat there in front of a screen for 12 hours because, I don't know, because I have nothing else to do, I guess. Um, <laughs> my time would have been better spent surfing or doing something else. I think we've all done that. It's easy to kind of quite well, I put in a long day at the office. And you where, have to, where, yeah. where do you surf in Texas? I know it used to be oh, in Coronado before. I haven't tried yet. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta get back to San Diego for that. Uh, okay, all right. I'm a, first, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a lawyer, Shores or Scripps kind of guy, personally. So you're, you're I'm, a, I'm a lawyer, Shores or Scripps, uh, Scripps pure oh, kind of guy. I, I okay. hang out under all the town. Okay. Yeah, I was more towards uh, Swamis and Moonlight. Okay. Okay. And Carol's bad. You know, I'd go the other yeah. direction. I'd go down yeah. to, um, I'd get on a tourmaline and do some yeah. longboarding every now and then. You see any, uh, you know, I use a parallel, uh, the metaphor that great surfers don't try and catch every wave. You, you paddle out to the brake line and you wait for the right setup. Uh, you see any similarities between surfing and trading? Uh, no, you know, I'm glad you brought it up. Besides the patience part of it? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I used to, um, been doing this long enough, back in the day, I used to write a, an occasional guest article on SFO Magazine back before uh, PFG went bust. And then did a, I think it was a weekly article for a minute on um, uh, Trader Planet uh, because they took over the SFG brand. Um, SFG? No. SFO, sorry. SFO Mag. Anyway, they took over the brand and I actually wrote one of the articles on kind of correlating surfing to trading with uh, exactly that mindset where, you know, you don't take every trade, you don't take every wave, you have patience. And sometimes even you take the perfect wave and you don't ride it right, you don't manage the trade right. And it's, you know, it's, it's an interesting article. I should dig it up and see if I can email it to you. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Was that the Stock Futures Options magazine? Yeah, yeah, that's the one way back in the and day. That wasn't that the one owned by Russ Wassendorf at PFG? Yep, back, yeah, exactly. So and then, you wait, did you, you're a grave dancer, aren't you, Ken? So you did you wait for him to be convicted and you got it for $100, the brand? No, 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 no. Um, who bought that? Uh, <laughs> I forget, I forget. The Trader Planet, Trader Planet bought out uh, SFO magazine. Oh, from okay. I know Julie Saltzman at Trader Planet. Okay, I don't think I know no. her. I okay. knew, um, shoot, Kira? Okay. Uh, I, think, I think they're actually kind of an arm for an auto trade type of software. No. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know much about their yeah. back end. I haven't even looked at them in forever. Anyway, uh, let's... Uh, if you you told us about your journey, how many years have you been trading now total? Well, off and on, um, again, since about 2008. And it's been, you know, like with everyone, I think it's been a, a fun journey. There's not really a, I, I know your next question, obviously, is how long does it take to make money? And Stop, stop playing Kreskin with me. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, but, Kreskin was on the Johnny Carson show quite a bit, too. Okay, okay. All right, all right, go ahead. But you know, there's there's not like there's not really a, a real answer to that question because I know I know some people that trade stocks lightly and maybe they follow the service or maybe they have a mentor and they make money, you know, not a lot of money, but they make money right away. And I know, you know, forex traders or stock traders that struggle for years and years and maybe never attain profitability because they can't wrap their mind around the complexities of it. They can't get they kinda of can't get out of their own way and really listen to the market. So there's a there's not really a right answer to that. I think like for myself, I mean the real answer is about two years, I think probably for most people, and I think for myself also to kind of feel comfortable doing it. But okay. that doesn't mean that you know a decade in you don't have you don't have setbacks and you don't have you don't get excited or scared or whatever it is. And yeah, that's, that's real. Wrong. Absolutely. That's real. And absolutely. I, I, I've I've tweeted even the greats have drawdowns. Oh heck yeah. Well, and even in real estate, man, we make we make bad deals from time to time, and they suck because uh, unlike unlike forex, if you make a bad trade, you know, you're it's easier to get out of a forex trade than a real estate transaction. I've lost a lot more money in real estate than forex, that's for sure. <laughs> doesn't mean I haven't. Seen it. Doesn't mean you haven't made. Most it people money. most people wouldn't believe you, unless they just point towards a crash in 08. But oh, most well. people would say, especially here in Southern California. 
how can you lose money in real estate in Southern Cal? You they know, don't so make any, they don't make any, they don't print any more land. I knew that I'd been in real estate a long time. I went to an investor meeting. I hadn't been to one in, I don't know, probably a couple of years in 09 or 2010 or something like that in San Diego. And I was talking to some guys that were thinking they were hot shops, buying and selling houses like, you know, like we all do. And I just flat out asked them like, well, you know, tell me about a deal you lost money on, man. He says, oh no, we haven't lost money on any of our deals. I'm thinking, well, how? I haven't been in this long enough then, have you? Because eventually something goes wrong, even in a good market and in a bad, you know, anyone can make money in a good market if you do enough volume. But when, you know, when things turn around and stuff goes wrong, it doesn't matter how good your strategy is or how good your plan is or how good your property is or how good your trade is. You know, if the market's against you, get out. And it's a lot harder to do, especially in something that's not liquid, like a, like a large real estate asset. Okay. You know, I, I'd like to ask you this and then I want to get to the charts you have up here. Uh, having been in real estate so long, first of all, did you believe after 09 that home prices would recover to new all time highs? Oh, heck yeah. And, and what do you think the uh, status of it is now? They say there's no bubble because there's, the banks have deleveraged. They don't have the toxic paper. Uh, what do you think of real estate now that's uh, come back like a lion? You know, I think people always point to if there's no bubble that's caused by the same thing that the last bubble was caused by. Um, there's no ninja loans, you know, no uh, what, no income, no job, no whatever the asset or whatever the heck a ninja Oh, yeah, was. you mean liar loans. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's not as many liar loans. There's not, it's not as easy to qualify for. So, yeah, a lot of that stuff has worked its way out of the market. Uh, we all know there's a lot more cash from, from overseas and domestically, both buying up properties and sitting on to a certain extent. Um, but, you know, in, out here in Dallas, I have a couple of friends who are contractors who do a lot of volume with a lot of hedge funds that buy 20, 30, 40 houses at a time just to park their cash on something and make a, not a very good return on it. So, yeah, we're not seeing necessarily a, a leverage up in the lending side of it, but we're seeing a certain amount of leverage up in the investment side of it that I think is not sustainable. I don't think it will crash nearly as well as it did in 2008. I think that's really difficult. I don't think there's as much fundamentals behind what's driving this market this time around, but there's there's yeah. still there's still definitely a, a bit of a bubble coming. Um, we're not going to see 2008 again, I don't think, for a minute. Probably see it later, okay. but we're not going to see what that crash is. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's uh, let's take a look at what you're using and what you're seeing, and you could start with the uh, euro euro USD or. Uh, uh, well, I mean, kind of seeing the same trend I think that everyone's seeing over 2017 uh, is pretty much yeah. something that you find something that the dollar is uh, traded against and buy whatever the other thing is and pick the strongest one, pretty much like we were talking, like you guys were talking about in the webinar this morning. Um, I don't know, the euro's, the euro's a good example, isn't it? Two so were, uh, so uh, were, did you ride this move at all? Oh, well, yeah, I think so. Um, it's, it's always a trick because you don't know it's going to do something like this, you know, until you're in the middle of it. And right. there's different areas, obviously, on the way up that you can short against. I mean, you see the area. What, what are those bands that you have there? They're not uh, bold. 50, uh, 100, and 200. Oh, okay, they're moving averages. All yeah, right. and they're not, they're not doing a whole lot, as we can see. I mean, it was great here and here, but, you know, it didn't do a whole lot, and, and 100 is not doing a whole lot. Um, I, I, I like trading personally on fibs in the predominant direction of a move. So, for example, in a move like this, if I was to trade on the short side, I would have, I would be looking for entries like this. There we go. I would be looking for entries that correlate either with basically a couple different things, um, maybe moving average, like the 100 here on the day and a fib retracement. You look at the big ones, you know, 30%, 50% and 618% retracements and look for entries on that. Um, but at some point you've got to convince yourself that the market's going the right direction. And for those, I, for directionality, I usually like looking at trend lines. So you can see, you know, this trend line pretty well supported. Yeah. And here, I, I usually like looking at breaks and trend lines for directional change in a trend. Okay, um, so you're, you have no reason technically to think that it's over until we break at least maybe your first 
Um, uh, Sharp is uptrend line that comes in around 115. It looks yeah, like. Yeah, probably not. Um, we, all, we all like picking tops, so and, and it's fun to do. And if you do it you know, enough times, you, you get it right. Um, so, I mean, this is pretty telling up here, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, this is supposed to be telling, but yesterday, you know, it didn't really do much for us. And then the next one, you know, is up here. So, yeah, we, we'd all like to short this and pick the top with 10 pips and ride a 500 pip move to the south. But, you know, in, until we have a reason to, um, I think we're going to keep going up, probably. Now that being said, it's probably going to turn around tomorrow and drop 200 pips and we'll see. It okay, right. so we're on a weekly. Take us through your progression. Do you look for trades from longer term time frames and then drill down for entries? Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty standard, pretty boring. I mean, nothing too special about it. So probably this area. I think it's, I think it's very, fun. very, very special. Well, hey, if it makes you money, um, you find something that works and you, you do it yeah. until it doesn't make money anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so I guess in this area, you're looking, you know, you start looking long for in this area. And then for entries, and what's, what's more beautiful, I guess, than, you know, really clear, than just just seeing this. You know, we have our consolidation. If you want to put some, some lines on it, do that. You see your consolidation. You see, you put a fib up here. Yeah. Um, where's a good one? Put it up here, right? Okay. You're the boss. Flips We're all captains one. of our own ship when it comes to drawing lines or clicking our mouse. Exactly. Anyway, clips the 618 and it projects up. I don't have the extension turned on, but it projects probably up to about a 1.5, it looks like up here. And then it just yeah. keeps doing that all the way up. And until you have a reason to stop doing it, and again, for me, it's a major trend line on a higher time frame. Until you have a reason to stop doing it, you just keep doing it until you're wrong. Um, and okay. you know, obviously, we all know it works with pretty much any pair, but the euro has been fantastic for at least uh, at least this year. Okay. Uh, what's on? Uh, do you kind of like have any feelings about? Uh, well, feelings. Uh, do you have any real strong biases? For the rest of the year, uh, do you trade with biases, or you look really. at the chart and that tells you everything? Not really. Um, okay. Yeah, not really. I, pretty much, pretty much technical stuff. Obviously, we all listen to fundamentals here and there, but yeah. I think I think they. So I you're agnostic, they, agnostic about the markets, and you don't care where they're going. You just want to identify the trend and look for good entries to take advantage of the trend. You know, and for the most part, I think that works fairly well for most traders. Really, I, I think I think I the fundamentals kind of can confirm a directional bias that's already established in the market. I think I think for the most part, the market really likes looking at one thing at a time. Um, and you have to think when you have a when you have a move, you know, like this. What piece of news is going to pop out? Come on, load. Anyway, what piece of news is going to pop out that's going to change this bias uh, in the market? What what is that? Eleven hundred pips. No, we all we all don't want to buy the high, but uh, you don't want to fight the trend either, and that's kind of self. Uh, you know, that's kind of contradictory to a certain extent. Um, so, uh, what uh, I see, you have RSI in the bottom. It's all scratched up. How do you yeah. use RSI? How do you yeah. use? It? Uh, kind of like you do, actually. In fact, I think I've learned a little bit from listening to your way of using it. Um, I think it's not a terribly good tool for picking for uh, divergence and picking a change in direction. But I think uh, you see, see what? Well, let's see. Let's see a good one. Um, not on this. Maybe on a daily. You, you use it for confirming direction. Yeah, I think I think it works better for that. I think there's a lot of false emergencies that you bump into that just don't really do any good. I mean, yeah, there's one that actually did do good, but you bump into a lot that don't. So, for example, you know, high here, getting into overbought. Okay, maybe we're going to see a consolidation, and then. You know, you buy on a dip and you confirm this dip with, again, I like confirm the dip with some kind of fit. Um, yeah. And also looking at price action. You know, you probably, on this on this particular price action, you probably buy, uh, excuse me, get out of the way. Anyway, you probably buy on the, you know, on the 318. But then if you're going long, you probably buy on this. And you're probably safe on that, like realistically. Do you, uh, do you, you, you use stocks? Uh, yeah, yeah, you use stops, but uh, that wasn't convincing. You use stops. Of course, I use stops. Everybody uses All stops. All right, just uh, just checking. But the other, uh, what well, the other big danger in trading is, I'm not opposed to doubling down if I think the trend's in the right direction and the price is going the way I want it to. Um, okay. That being said, 
you know, you always use proper money management. You don't risk more than, you know, more than you can afford to lose on a trade. I don't think, I don't think that your account balance is risk capital by any stretch of the imagination. I think that's stupid. But I think that any, you know, the maximum exposure that you have at any given time absolutely is risk capital. And if you can't afford to live without it, you probably, probably shouldn't be trading it. I agree. How do you know if it's risk capital? Well, if uh, you can still have a nice steak dinner in the evening. Um, in your life. <laughs> Too now I know why you moved to Texas. All right. So uh, anything else you want to share with the community, Tim? I, you know, I want to congratulate you. A lot of people that uh, do this also have an axe to grind. Did you ever, you have about 6,000 followers. Have you ever had any kind of service to people? Oh, yeah. I, I just get my I just, get huh? them by, I just get them by talking crap on Twitter and pissing people off. Um, oh, you're one of you're are you you're a troll? Yeah, yeah, heck yeah. Well, that's Twitter, Twitter, isn't it? Isn't that why they made it? I, I I'm beginning to believe so. <laughs> um, uh, you're convincing you know, me. I've I've thought about it, but I like real estate uh, and trading too much, and I don't want to. I don't think I really want to deal with the responsibility. It was tough for me to write an article once a week uh, a couple of years ago. So I think you know, for me to every day sit in a trading room or give out signals to someone, I don't think it's something that I'd be good at. Um, why are you guys hired? Uh, I don't know. I you know I'm I don't do the hiring. Gosh, well, I'll, so I'll, you, you I'll, can email Blake at uh, <laughs> I, no, I, 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 analytics dot com. Okay, okay. Uh, tweet it to me. Um, All right. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But, but you know, I, I want to congratulate you for coming on and wanting to share. And uh, you know, a lot of people fear death, uh, public speaking more than death. So, a public you know, speaking. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Can, can, I say, can I say a final note on a kind of a, a different level? Yeah. Um, just for newer traders or for people that are thinking about getting into something like real estate or something like trading, is well, really um, if you if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Is um, Really, really do your homework, and again, don't treat it like a job where you show up on Monday to Friday and expect to get paid. Treat it like a lifestyle, and treat it like a really having a company um, where you are the you know you are the one employee that you know you have to treat that aspect of it like a job. But have a business plan, have a model, have an idea of where you want to go and how you want to do it. And I don't just mean you know taking a thousand dollar account and doing your compounding thing on Excel and saying, well, shoot, I'm going to be a millionaire in four years if I just you know make 30% a month for the next uh, 48 months. Um, I mean, really really sitting down and having the mindset of what is my time worth in terms of what I'm doing and and how to pursue doing it. Um, on, on, and let me give an example, j just real quick, is how long does it take to learn how to trade? It takes as long as it takes to learn how to walk. And for me, I've actually learned how to walk twice. Um, once when I was, I don't know, one or two or something like that, and once, two and a half years ago, where I fell uh, while rock climbing and broke my back and was paralyzed for a minute. Um, and I'll tell you, it's, it's tougher to learn how to walk the second time after you've had a big setback like that than the first time because you know what it's supposed to be like, but you don't really know how you're supposed to do it this time around. Um, and just one quick story that, uh, that I think will be kind of interesting is, you know, everything's fine now, by the way. We have a uh, great real estate company, great trading. Out of getting out of the hospital and barely being able to walk, we actually ramped up on construction and do you know do roofs and uh, some construction too, which is one of the funniest things about being paralyzed. Starting a roofing company is kind of a weird thing, and that's just something that we do you know here and there. But I had more experience in the hospital in therapy when I was outpatient at Sharp in San Diego. Um, okay, let me let me pull this up real quick, show you if you don't mind where. What happened? Really? You fell. You fell off a roof. I, no, I fell while rock climbing. Actually, um, oh, rock climbing. Okay. And yeah, here we go. That's kind of cool. And uh, there's getting on the plane, flying from Dallas to San Diego. Um, huh. And here is if it'll load. Walking out of the hospital in San Diego if it'll load. Anyway, um, when you pursue something like trading, when I was an outpatient in San Diego in the hospital. One of the first times I walked, like they have a little kind of hundred yard square that you walk around to practice your walking. Right. And the uh, the therapist and my wife actually commented after we completed this the first time, 
that you could actually feel the heat radiating off of me from these legs that hadn't worked for probably two and a half months or walking out of the hospital. You, you could feel the heat radiating off of me from walking out of this hospital after I learned how to walk again. Um, and if you take that passion and do something else like real estate or like trading and that desire and that drive, because a lot of people don't want to put that much work in it to it, quite honestly. If you take that same passion and devote it to something that you want to do, like real estate or like uh, trading or, you know, take your pick. There's no, there's no magic pill. There's no magic way to make a million bucks. It really takes determination and it takes uh, just drive to do it. You take that same drive where you can actually have people feel your passion about what you're doing, radiate off you. Um, you can really do amazing things with yourself. That's a house that we built last year. Um, and, you know, here's one we're actually building for a client this year. So when I got out of the hospital, again, barely able to walk and decided to kind of jump back into real estate because I didn't have enough money at the time to pursue trading uh, the way I liked it. Because, you know, you're out of commission for six months. It puts a big ding in your bank account. Yeah. Um, I took that same drive and devoted it back into real estate and back into construction. And honestly, don't even don't even like dealing with uh, clients in construction that much, but blew up the business incredibly. And now actually looking to get back out of it just because we're not really, you know, not like I said, I don't really like it. But take that same drive of learning how to walk and, um, you know, learning how to do something you love and put it to something that's really constructive for yourself. And you can do an amazing thing with it. It's a lot. It's a lot of fun. What? What? It, so the tragedy was the spark and catalyst for you to have a new lease on life and a different perspective of your life in the world. Absolutely. Tell me through it. Okay. Ab absolutely. I had the experience of getting old and uh, getting old really quick, and then having the oppor amazing opportunity of getting over being old and being able to experience things differently. And it definitely put, man, it, it changed up my blood pressure all over the place. Things that used to piss me off really don't matter anymore. Um, yeah. like I and the, you don't sweat the small stuff because after not being able to walk, almost everything is small stuff. When you have a singular mindset that all that matters, we had we had three houses going before the accident. Um, yeah. Lost a ton of money on one, broke even on another, and made a little bit on another. And honestly, none of that mattered when we were in the hospital because all that mattered was... Right. You know, and fortunately, we had enough you know, money to pay our bills, but none of that mattered because our one goal was learning how to walk again and getting out of there. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, honestly, a lot of people don't have that. Uh, a lot of people don't have the desire or the drive in business, in life, in, in you know, whatever it might be to really give it their all. Um, and, if they, you know, if they did, they could do amazing things with it in trading, in, in life, in real estate, in whatever it might be. And uh, I was very fortunate, like I said. It was a life-changing experience for me. And uh, it, it's not something I wish on anyone, but it's something having gone through, you're definitely better off from. Thank you for your inspirational talk uh, and, and, you know, being an open book. And, you know, it's like you don't appreciate what you have till you lose it sometimes. So oh. we take for granted just walking around, Tim, don't we, until we can't do it. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad to call you my trading warrior brother, and you are a warrior in more ways than just the markets by your life story. Uh, glad to call you my friend, Tim, and thanks so much for talking about trading and real estate and what you went through and the fire that you have burning inside of you now. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was a great interview. I'm glad I reached out to you. Well, thank you so much, Dale. I really appreciate it. It was a fantastic time, and I absolutely love what you guys are doing. Love the interviews. Please, uh, please keep them going. Thank you so much, Tim. So let's turn around to let's turn around Tuesday, guys. I want to thank uh, Blake and Steve and Stelios and Tim Cozen. What an inspirational story that is. So you know, you never know what another man or woman has gone through unless you're in their shoes. So we got to feel for what it was like to be in Tim's shoes. So like I say, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. There are many people out there that can't walk and the fact that you could go for a walk on the beach on a beautiful day is worth a thousand pips to me. 
So thank you everyone for your great questions. See you tomorrow. Good luck, good luck on the Fed minutes. We'll see if any of these turnaround Tuesday candidates manifest. See you tomorrow. Adios.